jump ahead, but it's kind of neat seeing Peter's name on the board today. I know you guys used to live right down the road. What, can you take us back a little bit to those days and what it was like for you two kind of dreaming big? Yeah, 2012 to probably, I think he bought his place in 2015 maybe. So, and then kind of after about a year at Challenge Tour, we, I mean, we were traveling around, rooming together. Um, it was me, him, Scott Pinkney. Um, trying to think, there might have been one other guy, but um, yeah, we. I mean, we had a lot of fun in Europe together. It was it was fun. So it's nice to see him play well, and you know, hopefully he plays well the uh, remainder of the three days. How did the course play today? I thought it was fine. Uh, the wind got up there probably a little bit earlier than I thought it would. Uh, course in good shape. The greens are there's not much grass on the greens. Uh, the green surfaces aren't great. Couple dead spots, uh, but other than that, I mean, the course is in great shape from you know T to the fringe. It's uh, it's in really great shape. Minus two, are you content with that score, all things considered? Yeah, I, I didn't do anything to really de deserve to be four or five under. I mean, that's a great score here. So um, just kind of ho hummed it around, and I mean, like I said, didn't really deserve anything worse. Didn't deserve anything better. Um, Brooks, you talked a little bit about Zach as captain in your press conference, but I was just curious, going back to Whistling Straits, what role did he fill uh, in terms of like your daily interactions? What was his kind of active role with you guys? Like I said, I think he's more of a energizer, like a team energizer. I think he's been pretty good. He, he's never really been a part of my pods. So, okay. um, you know, all the, all the details and, you know, certain things I, I don't see. Maybe the other guys will see, but he, he's, he's definitely fun to be around. He's a great guy. Um, and I think everybody that's played on a team that he's been on or been an assistant with him, uh, I think is knows that it's deserved, and uh, I'm happy to see it. And then just a quick follow up: like when you first came on tour, what were your interactions with him like? Obviously, he was a, already the veteran and everything. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too much. I never really asked any veterans. I just kind of watched from afar from certain guys, DJ, uh, G Mac. Just picked out those two guys as stuff I wanted um, wanted to kind of pull from each of them, but I, I didn't really. I don't think probably the first time I ever played with Zach was probably the first time I ever talked to him. I don't know when that was, but um, yeah, probably 15, 16, somewhere around there. Yeah, thank you. Brooks, you talked yesterday a little bit about all that comes with playing at home or near home. Is there is there a pressure element to that too? Like when you do have a lot of friends here that ordinarily wouldn't be be able to come see you in person or whatever. Is there a little bit more pressure to perform in those moments? Uh, no, I, I create all the pressure on myself. So I, it doesn't matter if a certain person's watching, not watching here, not there. Uh, it, it doesn't matter to me. But uh, it, I mean, obviously, it's nice to have them out. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I enjoy it. A couple of my friends came down from Boston. I think they were, one of them was out here today. And uh, I think the rest are caddying for my brother. But um, you know, the rest of them, I think, are coming down today. You had mentioned you don't hurt yourself shooting around like that today. What would you like to see maybe just a little sharper? Uh, maybe a little bit of touch on the greens. It's it's funny because they, they're so, they look burnt out a little bit or they don't have that green grass. It's more of the brown, yellowish stuff and they look faster than they are. And especially on the downhill pots or whatever, I think that the, just looking at them, you think they roll out further than they do. Um, but the, the speed on them is fine. It's just I think sometimes they get a little full. Just, they just your eyes fool you, man. Brooks, if if I may, uh, an off topic. I'm getting writing a story for the Players Championship. I know you don't scare easy, um, but it's generally accepted that the tee shot on 17 can be the scariest. I'm trying to figure out what's the second scariest tee shot. Uh, the drop zone from 17 because I've been there a lot. <laughs> I've, I'll be honest with you, I've played that hole. I mean, if they throw that stat up of who played it the worst over the last five years, it's probably me. Um, yeah, I haven't played that hole very well. So, But the second, the, the drop zone up there, that's probably the second. How tough is the 18th tee shot? It all depends on your club selection. You can hit three iron out there and rope it in and you know, have a long iron in. Um, depends on the wind, honestly. I think if that wind's off the left, it makes it tougher. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I think I hit anywhere from three iron to three wood. Uh, I've never really been in a situation where I've got to, you know, get one down there. Um, but yeah, maybe hit driver at, at occasionally, once out of every 10 rounds, maybe. The right wind, right every conditions, everything. But I mean, but you take par in that hole every day or play the week one over on that hole, I think you'd be all right. Thanks, sir. Good, thanks. Thank you.